Muppets Now Episode 2 Fever Pitch is now out exclusively on Disney+. Plus. I'm going to give you my impressions and my favorite segment of this episode, and I want to hear from you as well. Welcome back to i 2 i Disney Through Our Eyes. My name is Kyle, and this is our Disney Variety Channel. We cover anything and everything Disney here and share it through our eyes. If you haven't done so already, please do make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell as well so you never miss a video that we upload. With Muppets Now Episode 2 in the books, I'm actually happy to say that this is refreshing to have the Muppets back in our lives. Now, after Episode 1, there seem to be some mixed reviews. I think some people may be a little bit too critical of this series in its early stages. It's going to take some time for them to figure out what segments do and don't work, what guests do and don't work, in a non-scripted format. Things sometimes just don't play the way that you think they would. They might not be that funny, the guests may not play along that well, but overall I've thoroughly enjoyed the series and hope that they're going to continue doing more and more variety of segments. Now just like in episode one fever pitch, episode two is going to have four different segments with a different topic, a different style of video segment, but each has its own different characteristics and different characters as well. I'll go ahead and name off the different segments that we have for this episode. To start off with, we have Pepe's Unbelievable Game Show. Followed by that, we've got Okie Dokie Cooking Returning Again. Third, we have Muppet Labs Field Test. And finally rounding out, we have Lifestyle with Miss Piggy. Segment number one is Pepe's Unbelievable Game Show. Finally, we get a game show segment on Muppets. Now, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Obviously, this stars Pepe King Prong, has Scooter in it as a main character as well, and a couple of Muppet guest stars, uh, namely Beauregard, uh, Penguin, and Carol as well. It's the first time I've ever seen Carol. So the premise for this show is that Scooter has come up with a game show, and uh, he has some ideas about some rules and things that he thinks are fun, but Pepe has different ideas, basically. He decides that, hey, I've got a better idea for how this should go, and I wouldn't necessarily call it better, but more interesting, probably more entertaining, if we're completely honest. So Pepe has decided to invite a couple of guests, uh, just some random people. One person's name is Bree, another person's name is Artoon. Pepe has some fun with that, looking at you, Cartoon. Uh, but he has them here for three different games that they're going to compete in, if you can call them games. Game number one is a staring contest. Yes, you heard me right, a staring contest. Now this actually results in a very funny segment for this segment of the show because it's 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 a staring contest. It's ridiculous. It's it's funny, and of course there's a penguin referee involved in this, and that just makes for some really hilarious moments there. I found myself cracking out. I three, two, one. Segment number one. Three, two, one. Game number one is a staring contest. Yes, you heard me right. A staring contest. And it is probably one of the funnier moments of the entire episode because how ridiculous is that? A staring contest. And to have a penguin Muppet refereeing that and trying to make you laugh the entire time, that results in some hilarious moments. And I think it plays really well into the unscripted format of this show. Game number two is called Laundry Time, and honestly, I just think this was Pepe's idea of how to get his own laundry done as well as some of the other Muppets in the studio. Essentially, the idea behind this is they dumped a hamper in front of the contestants, and they have decided that they're going to have them toss this into the hamper or the Muppet Carol. I don't know why I did that for Carol, but Carol's mouth. The funny thing is, as much as there is laundry flying and trying to keep track of these points, they really can't decide who wins at the end of this thing and they just kind of give up. I mean, Scooter is just getting frustrated throughout this entire segment. And finally, game number three is just called The Final Question. And literally, he just asked them one question and the question was, who should win? And whoever answered it first got it. It was Artoon who got to go on to the bonus round and compete with Gonzo and the chickens, especially Camilla Chicken, his favorite. In the bonus round, Gonzo had him try to pick which chicken was actually Camilla out of all of them after he mixed up the chickens. 
and Gonzo couldn't even get it right. So just like this show started and ended in chaos. Segment number two of this episode is a good old favorite, okie dokie, oh, I'm gonna try to do it again, okie dokie cooking with the Swedish chef. Again, the idea behind this segment is that the Swedish chef is gonna be cooking a dish alongside a special guest. Your special guest for this time is Danny Trejo. Know him from a lot of action movies and Spy Kids fans. I know you're thinking about him right now. Beverly Plume is the host again. And honestly, she's trying to host at the same time of keeping Danny and Swedish Chef from going at each other the entire time. Because apparently they have this weird feud about who has the best mustache. But it was really funny. And I'm glad they played that one up really well. This again, these segments are really indicative upon the special guest. And if they can play well off of the Swedish Chef's usual humor that he has. The dish that they're gonna be cooking for this time is around tacos. And more specifically, Danny decides he wants to do a mole taco. Now you can already think, how would the Swedish chef decide he's gonna mess this one up? Well, it does involve a mole. You heard me right, an actual furry mole. Now it's a Muppet mole, but he includes that in his dish as well. Needless to say, Danny Trejo creates a beautiful dish, a beautiful taco that looks really good. And I actually am now hungry thinking about it. While Swedish Chef pretty much just wraps a mole Muppet in a taco shell, throws some cilantro, some sour cream, all kinds of other taco ingredients at it, and it just results in a mess, but it's still pretty funny. Danny Trey, who I thought was a great addition to this segment. Again, it really depends on how they play off the Swedish chef. And nothing against Carlina Will in episode one, I just thought Danny did a better job at it, which made this segment a little bit more enjoyable for me. Segment number three is one that I've been waiting to see with these main characters, and it's called Muppet Labs Field Test. And when you hear field test, experiment, anything like that in the world of Muppets, you know who that involves, and that is Bunsen and B. Now, honestly, a lot like last time with the Swedish Chef segment, I had my hopes up really high for this and I was worried I was gonna be let down. I was not. This was a very good segment and I really enjoyed seeing these two doing their usual thing in the world of science. Now, the idea behind this segment is that Bunsen and Beaker are gonna tackle a different topic each time in science. And this time the topic was heat. Now they're assisted by this new special assistant that Dr. Bunsen Honeydew has brought along called Beak R, which essentially is a Google Home, I guess, some type of home device that speaks to you off in the distance that really creeps me out. Beaker is not a fan of this new assistant trying to come in and steal his space, and that continues throughout the episode. But essentially what we get into is an exploration of heat and its effects on different items, which really brings to light the fact that Dr. Bunsen Honeydew is a pyromaniac. They literally just burn things for the fun of it and it's pretty funny. At the end of this segment though, we have an opportunity for Beaker to exact his revenge upon Beak R. And let's just say it doesn't end so well for Beak R. It was great to see Bunsen and Beaker involved again in the Muppet segments. And I'm very happy to report that this segment I think was a hit. Segment number four is another returner from episode one, and that's lifestyle or lifestyle, lifestyle, whatever way you want to phrase it, it says lifestyle and messes with the whole lay part, much to the chagrin of Miss Piggy again. So again, the main characters, Miss Piggy and Deadly are back, hosting basically what is her YouTube or Instagram session and has different mini segments throughout the entire segment for her. For mini segment number one, it's called Tips from the Top again, if you forgot and they essentially discuss some of these things. She's sitting on an exercise ball, bouncing around. Bobo the Bear even comes in and decides that he wants to take part in that. Obviously doesn't end well for Miss Piggy, but especially the ball. Mini segment number two is called Try It If You've Forgotten. And again, Tay Diggs is back. So I guess he's gonna be the mainstay on this part of Miss Piggy's segment each time, which I thought he fit in very well again and played well with Miss Piggy. The thing that they're trying is called hot yoga. Sounds a little scandalous, right? But really what it is, is they have cranked the temperature up in the room to really high, honestly, way higher than I would ever want to be in a room and do a little bit of yoga. The idea again is to get into a deep sweat, which is apparently very cleansing for the body. And let's just say this, that yoga is not Miss Piggy's forte, especially when it involves heat. And finally, to round off Miss Piggy's segment is Let's Chat. Again, she's got some special guests in kind of that YouTube or social media aspect, all sitting in a virtual room together 
and discussing a topic and they're going to be discussing in this one healthy habits. The special guests for this segment were again celebrity guests Linda Cardellini and a penguin as well. I love seeing the Muppet penguins. Yolanda the rat and then one of her companions and then Camilla chicken. When they get into this discussion about healthy habits. We realize they're really not so healthy. They try to put on the airs that they are, but really Linda is pretty much the only one that's healthy in this. So that's all the segments. But again, it's worth mentioning that they have these intro, outros, and intersections, I guess you'll call them, between the different segments with Scooter uploading the content into the show. And like last time, he's joined with someone, not Kermit this time, but Fozzie Bear. Again, I just think they're great filler segments in between trying to get to all the segments and makes the story flow a little bit better. Now it's time for me to pick my favorite segment in episode two. And really, I enjoyed all of these segments this time, especially on the second viewing. I would highly recommend that if you're not enjoying it on the first go around, go watch it again. I think a lot of the humor lands better the second time. Now, at the bottom, if I have to put some at the bottom, I think I'm going to put Lifestyle with Miss Piggy. Again, it was very funny with her and Deadly and then the interactions with all the other characters. Just not as funny as some of the other segments here. At number three, and honestly, I really don't even see this as like number three. It's almost like a tie for second because all of the segments above this point, I really, really enjoyed. But Pepe's unbelievable game show, I thought was again, very funny, plays well into the unscripted format. However, again, I do think that the special guests kind of drug it a little bit until they kind of figured out their role. And that's probably the only thing that might push this down to number three for me. Number two though, would definitely be Muppet Labs Field Test. Bunsen and Beaker, I mean, do I need to say anything else? They're just hilarious. And then at number one, the Swedish chef, Okie dokie cooking redeems itself. Again, dependent upon the special guest and Danny Trejo combined with Swedish Chef made this segment a winner for me. Now it's your turn at home. Have you watched Muppets Now episode two, Fever Pitch? If you haven't, why not? And if you have, which of these is your favorite segment? If I got it wrong, let me know down there in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to see more Muppets content from our channel, I put some links above and down in the description below, so check those out. We'll also be sharing some other amazing content from us on this channel at the very end of this video, so make sure you check that out. Make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell taken because we don't want to miss you on another edition of Eye2Eye. Until we assemble again, may the force be with you, and I'll see you real soon.